This is Access Ann Arbor. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Access Ann Arbor. My name is Danielle Pertel, Miss Washtenaw County, and I am joined today by three panelists to talk about something very near and dear to my heart, music and memory. I'm joined by my guests, Jessica Ross of Huron Woods, Gary Muntz of the Chelsea Senior Center, and Corey Rochford of Chelsea Music and Memory. So what is music and memory? On paper, it's very simple. Music and Memory trains healthcare professionals to use personalized playlists and music therapy to enrich the lives of individuals with Alzheimer's and other forms of dementia. But as I'm sure my panelists will agree, in practice it's so much more. So, Gary, I understand that you're deeply involved with the Chelsea Senior Center. Could you tell us a little bit about what Music and Memory means to you and your community? Absolutely. I'm very fortunate to uh, be involved with the Senior Center the Senior Center and uh, its partners, uh, the Chelsea Retirement Community, uh, Silver Maples, uh, the Chelsea District Library, and Essen Audiology, were fortunate enough to receive a grant from the Chelsea Community Foundation to form our Chelsea Music and Memory Program. So we've been in existence about one year now. And uh, when I was at the Senior Center and this opportunity came up to me, I, I looked at it a little bit and then I suddenly realized that there are times in your life where things come to you that are just too good to believe. I mean, you look at it and you think about it and then you realize, wow, this is something that's really meaningful, purposeful, and you just need to do it. So I, I took the opportunity right away to, to help the Senior Center out. So having said that, I think it's really important, Danielle, that you understand that how appreciative we are of your efforts and commitment to this because we see this in action every day yeah. yes. and we, we're just every day as a reminder of how important this, this is to us. So we, we thank you for that. It's, it's, it's really important. Yeah. Thanks a lot. So I, a few things that I'd like to say about it is that, you know, people ask, well, what, what does this mean? What do you see with people who, who become users of music and memory, the people that we deal with? And as I said, it's one of those things in your life where you just need to do it because it's so important. I think for me, if you were just to say one thing, it's to see a person who comes in or you're working with who's, they look like they're isolated, withdrawn, unaware, and then suddenly there's this transformation that happens where there's a smile on their face. Where before you, they wouldn't engage, they were nonverbal, you can, but suddenly now you have a person that's smiling uh, and wonderful things are going on and that just opens up a whole plethora of opportunity for them. Uh, easier to deal with, uh, their families are like suddenly able to communicate with these people or, or, or have the people back that they've lost. They felt they've lost, so they have these people come back. Um, I think also the fact that, you know, for, for people who are uh, either in a residential facility or someplace else, it, it, it's an opportunity for the caregivers to, to have extra time because music and memory now sort of gives you a respite, a relief from having to be uh, always the one that has to care for those people. So I'm very fortunate to have the opportunity to be involved with it. I think the Chelsea Music and Memory uh, program is a great one and we're looking forward to, to continuing and growing that program. Wonderful. And so as I'm sure you guys understand, just to let our audience know, if you're not intimately familiar with Alzheimer's and other forms of dementia, it's an awful disease where the brain quite literally is dying piece by piece. But if there is a silver lining, it's the fact that the parts affected by music are the last to go. So when you play music from someone's era, from their wedding, from a favorite high school dance, you're lighting up their entire brain, uh, waking up parts of the brain that have been quiet for a very long time. Right. Uh, so that's one of my favorite things about music and memory is getting people back for that very brief period of time. So, Jessica from Huron Woods, um, tell me a little bit about Huron Woods and how you found music and memory. Yeah, thank you, Danielle. Thank you for, you know, having me here today. Um, this is something I'm very passionate about and I'm very excited about you know, being able to um, tell our audience a little bit more about music and memory and what it means to people who have memory loss as well. So um, here on Woods is an assisted living community serving people with memory loss and, um, and progressive dementias and all of our residents at Huron Woods have memory loss. 
and um, we're very unique in that way that that's what we specialize in um, you may not have known this um, but we actually began 25 years ago as a research project and um, between St. Joe's and Eastern Michigan and it was to basically identify better ways of um, providing care to the population that we serve and through that um, we found that you know it's better to have a home-like environment and um, focus on more of the social psychosocial needs rather than more of the clinical needs and through that after 25 years now um, we provide things like art therapy and music therapy and music and memory just adds to what we naturally do already mm -hmm. so previously you guys already had a vast library of music and then music and memory just kind of stumbled upon uh, you guys so tell me about that process and how music and memory has refined your library yeah so Huron Woods has always utilized the arts like dance and music and um, the visual arts to provide life enriching opportunities and to of course engage our residents and um, we've offered art therapy and music therapy and incorporated the arts in our everyday life there um, but music and memory personalizes the music to the individual and um, um, this was just, like I said, a natural, you know, progression of what we were already doing, and um, yeah. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Super duper. So for my audience members just tuning in, we're talking about music and memory. I'm hosting a music and memory iPod drive. We'll be talking about this in a bit, but music and memory uses iPod donations to get music to these memory care individuals. If you search music and memory iPod drive and fundraiser on Facebook, the event will pop up. It is public. I will personally come to your house and pick yeah. up your iPods <laughs> from you. Uh, so please check it out and reach out. So now, Corey, tell me a little bit about Chelsea Music and Memory and how you guys began. Um, the music and memory has just been a blessing to our community. I'm so glad to be a part of it. Um, music and memory kind of found us. Um, we got the, the grant from the foundation, and I was asked to represent Chelsea Retirement Community on that. Mm -hmm. And um, Chelsea Retirement Community is, is celebrating their 110th anniversary this year. Wow. They have been around for quite a while. Um, they have a continuum of care there. So we have independent living, and we also have um, nursing and rehab along with assisted living, which is both traditional assisted living and memory care. So we, when we came together, we started to focus on our memory care. Um, we do have around 91 residents that couldn't be in our memory care. Um, the music has been such an inspiration. It has been able to connect people to each other. And that's hard to do with, with, um, with memory loss. They lose so many connections with, with the world and their thought process is so hard. And, um, we're just so grateful to have this opportunity and be here with you today to let the public know about this. Awesome. So I understand that a lot of you guys are dealing with a continuum of care. So music and memory isn't just for end-stage dementia. It's for people from the very beginning, even just people who are aging um, nearing retirement. So for any of you guys, how, how can you use music and memory along that continuum in different ways? For, for us, we have our independent living residents, and they like to stay in their apartment with their loved one that does have dementia. So we'll have, they'll be a caregiver for that person with dementia. And Gary has worked with some of our residents from our independent living, and that is a blessing to them because while they're busy maybe wanting to read a book, they can, the um, loved one is with their headphones. Um, if they want to go to the senior center and they want to um, do the quilting group or something, then their um, loved one is being um, entertained, well, not entertained, but enjoying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, I think we see this in a number of ways. Uh, you know, trying to, trying to take care of your loved ones or in a facility like this, that sometimes people are agitated or irritable sometimes, and trying to get them to do their daily requirements of, you know, getting along. Uh, it's helpful to introduce music to them at that time. If there's something, if they're feeling uneasy about something or reluctant to do something, by, you know, having the music and memory available, putting on the headphones, it changes the mood. Mm -hmm. And it makes them more, feel more cooperative and feel calmer and want to, want to participate in whatever's going on. So sort of in using it in the day-to-day -day sort of getting over the rough spots during the day is, is what I've seen happen a lot. Definitely, and in my experience, um, you know, because we're a community, um, when our residents have the, um, the music on, it can have many different effects. The observations I've had can be anything from, um, I had a resident who um, was listening to Glenn Miller in the mood, 
and started pursing his lips like he was going to play a trumpet. And, um, and that was just really valuable, you know, to the family member. And, the, and his wife actually was sitting right next to him. And um, we found out at that point that he was a trumpet player. And the same Beautiful. gentleman, you know, um, was uh, also listening to Greek music. And he, was, he just came right out and he said, I, I really wish that my mother was here to listen mm -hmm. to this, to hear this. So um, the fact that, you know, too, like you're saying, the self-esteem, you know, it really boosts someone's mood when you're playing music, you know, like you said, from their wedding or from, you know, their era or something that really means something to them. And um, we have a resident that just wants to hear the same song right. over and over mm -hmm. again, and it's Let It Be by the Beatles. <laughs> yeah. And it can really increase her... Um, just increase her um, uh, her her al being alert and her um, you know socially you know talking more uh, throughout the day and um, it's just it's a wonderful effect. Mm -hmm. I think one thing about music and memory that I think all of us have, have learned is that you know it, it is music true, but we we can't lose track of the idea of personalized music, exactly. mm -hmm. and that I think yeah. each of us in our own when we use music and memory. We spend a fair amount of time trying to arrive at music that really is personal to an individual through a variety of sources. I mean, we've mentioned a lot of things about, you know, high school. Did they were they right. a member band in high school? Right. Uh, what songs did they play at their wedding? Were they in the military mm -hmm. service? So there's lots of things we do to try and really focus on the music that's important and meaningful to them, and it does make a big difference in in the results that we see. Mm -hmm. And so, Corey, I know when we first spoke, you troubleshooted with me. So what if you don't have someone's family members to talk to to know what kind of music they like? What if you don't know what song they play at their wedding because they're nonverbal? So how right. do you get over those obstacles with well, your volunteers? Our, we have the most amazing volunteers. We have <laughs> such a great volunteer pool. <laughs> that, um, some of our volunteers actually had um, their family member lived at Towsley Village in our memory care unit. And so they're very comfortable with, um, with dementia. So they will go in and they will take a speaker with the iPod and we'll have a general kind of list of music on it and they will um, play songs and see the reaction. Like they'll light up and some, sometimes they'll say, well, that's nice, but not for me. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so kind of like that. And then we also have gone through and um, one of our volunteers, he made a list of when does music mostly affect your life. And from the ages of 16 to 22 is the music that is in your heart that you fall back to and that you know the songs to. And he, so we take the ages of the residents and we'll fit it into that category of what was popular during that time. And that works really well too. Yeah, we usually do that as well um, because you're exactly right on. And um, typically that's the music that um, really is the focus and mm -hmm. works the best. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think also for me it was useful. Music, the Music and Memory program itself offers us uh, lists of music that are broken down by in all different kinds of ways, suggestions of yeah. music by genre, by year it was made, uh, things like that. So it, once you've started to work with people, you sort of get a feel that a certain age group, they share some common music, like I'm sure all of us, if yes. we talked about it for a minute, right. could come up with a handful of songs that would, <laughs> would want to be on our playlist, yeah. right? <laughs> we, I, I want this playlist. Matter of fact, I, I was talking to someone the other day and they were saying, you know, I'm going to start working on my playlist now. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that I have it ready idea. when I need it. I so do that. Yeah, <laughs> start working on your own personalized playlist. So yes. there's lots of things that go into it, but the, the bottom line is that, you know, it's really important to take the time to, to, to make a, a playlist that is appropriate for the individual. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Jessica, I know that the playlists aren't that long. Um, right. Can you tell us a little bit more about what's practical? Definitely. And just to bounce off what, you know, Gary was saying is that, uh, too, you know, that's the the great thing about the music and memory training that you go through to be certified as a music and memory program um, or community um, is that they give you options and ideas and so it's just wonderful because it's um, when we were putting our playlists together they really recommend no more than 10 songs on an iPod for an individual and you th might think well that's not very much music but for a resident who has memory loss um, it's almost perfect mm -hmm. it's almost perfect because you can go back the next day, play the same iPod, and it's like brand new when you play those songs. And even though we have thousands of songs to choose from, right. <laughs> um, you know, those 10 songs might mean the most, you know, to exactly. that individual. So. Awesome. 
So speaking of Music and Memory certified locations in Washtenaw County, I am hosting a drive for iPods or iTunes gift cards to help some of our locally certified organizations, such as here on Woods and the Chelsea Music and Memory Program. If you want to check that out on Facebook, if you haven't already, just search Music and Memory iPod Drive and Fundraiser and check it out for more information. So clearly, Music and Memory is not just music, as, as we've been discussing. Some uh, statistics and facts on how Music and Memory programs affect nursing homes and assisted living facilities, improved quality of life, as we've shared anecdotally, reduced antipsychotic and anti-anxiety medication, uh, which not only lowers costs, but gets rid of those awful side effects that a lot of the residents are having, um, a lot of GI issues from those medications, so just overall improving their lives. A reduction of fall, bed, and chair alarms. As someone who's worked in an aid, as an aid in assisted living facilities, those are the bane of your existence and something you don't want to hear during your shift. Mm -hmm. So it makes it safer for everybody. Um, the staff is happier, the residents are happier, yes. and it's, it's a really powerful program for all. So, Corey, these benefits are out of this world huge. Yes. Um, how do these affect you and your staff and your residents and families on a daily basis? It's wonderful. It's just wonderful. Um, I, w I would like to share a story about one of our residents. Um, she was, she's very resistant to care in the morning. It's really hard on her. And since we've had music and memory, um, well, I also want to say that a lot of times in the morning, you know, that would be really hard for her and she would need to have like some calm down time before she could actually go into breakfast. But since we've had music and memory, we put the, um, the headphones on her and she sings during morning care. She just sings awesome. and she goes directly into the dining room and she has her meal and it's, Oh, it's just like her own world and um and we use that with therapy with her too so in therapy when she's in her kind of happy spot and it's just it's beautiful it's just beautiful that is very cool. um, we do you know our our family members can use it to engage with we do have speakers um, we don't always use headphones and we can bring us the speaker when um, the family members there so they, they can listen to it together and we have a couple and she will put it on with their wedding song and they will they will dance in their room <laughs> Oh, it's just so beautiful. <laughs> um, we have we have extended what we do. We we've had put um, we have seven kitchens in our memory care. Um, we have put music and memory in each of the kitchens. So when people are out and about, we can listen to it. Um, the playlist can be with Christmas music, and it can be with like Irish music, and then just our kind of like fun music for the day or calming music. We have all kinds of different playlists on there. And then another way we've expanded is we use it with our hospice patients. So we have a couple hospice um, iPods loaded with music that can help them help with the calming. So it, it's just been Very a cool. blessing, such a blessing to us. Very cool. Uh, Jessica, likewise, tell me about these benefits of music and memory in your facility. Yeah, um, just like what Corey is mentioning, um, you know, music and memory isn't just about the individuals, you know, utilizing these iPods, but as um, a whole, you know, community, as a whole living room. Um, or kitchen or dining room, um, you know, we utilize the iPods as well and so there's multiple playlists to create a mood or to create a setting um, as, you know, for meal time or in the morning, you know, waking up and um, so many observations are even not just during the time that residents are listening to the music but even after, I mean, minutes after, hours after from family members who listen together through the speakers or for the resident you know, listening to it, the nurses, you know, have said, wow, what a difference this makes, you know, and just like you were mentioning about, you know, reducing falls and um, just it's really proven exactly what they say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it does. Awesome. So often when we talk about memory care, music and memory and caring for memory care individuals, uh, we overlook the caregivers in the community, the people who are in the homes. Um, so these individuals, as I'm sure you understand, make a huge sacrifice, whether it be financial, or just general life sacrifices for their loved ones. So Gary, could you tell us a bit more about the types of sacrifices, the life of a caregiver, and how music and memory helps that? I'd like to start that conversation by saying, if there are caregivers that are watching us today, uh, I want to tell them how much we appreciate everything that they do, yeah. how difficult it is. It's a challenging, unrewarding kind of task that they have to undertake. And it's just incredible what they do. There's no doubt that all of us have experience with trying to care for our loved ones in our home setting. We want to keep them in our home settings. And 
With uh, an Alzheimer's patient, if you look at the amount of care that's required by a family to have home care for an Alzheimer's patient, you're looking at about probably 180 hours a month. Wow. Mm -hmm. So that's 40 hours per week. And there are lots of different caregivers in the family. I mean, if you look at the statistics in America, they estimate almost 16 million caregivers in our homes. So that's, that's daughters and sons, and it's, it's children, it's spouses, all providing care for these people. And as I said earlier, there's no doubt that we, we, we provide care in our home for all kinds of people that, we, that are near and dear to us and we want to keep with us in the home. But if, if you look at the studies that they've done with caregivers for Alzheimer's, they, there is a, a, an enormous difference in that population from other caregivers. And that is, these people are much more at risk because of the care that they're giving. They're sacrificing their own well-being, their own, their own sense of health is being sacrificed. Numbers show that <clears throat> because they're neglecting themselves and applying so much of their energies to caring for their loved ones, that they're at enormously higher risk for things like heart disease, for cancer, for diabetes. So it's an enormous burden for people to be a caregiver. So where does music and memory come in? It's mentioned earlier that music and memory, when, when someone is listening to that music, it's a brief respite for a caregiver, an opportunity to sort of let your guard down for a minute, relax, and catch a breath. So it not only extraordinarily valuable for the Alzheimer's patients, but for the caregivers who have to deal with this on a daily basis. It's a, it's a blessing for them. For sure. So as we are running a little low on time, I want to hear from you guys, just a little call to action. Um, Jessica, briefly, I know that Huron Woods memory program, um, <coughs> music memory program, is growing faster than you guys can keep up with. So give us a brief example of what that looks like and how the community can rally behind you. Right, Huron Woods wants to continue, of course, to grow this program. And someday we'd love to have, um, you know, for all of our 70 residents, um, to have iPods program for them to, um, uh, to you know, have personalized music instead of, actually we have 15 iPods right now um, that we're sharing. And, um, you know, downloading music and personalizing it takes a lot of man hours. And so the opportunity, you know, if there's a volunteer out there that would like to, you know, assist with that, um, if they feel comfortable. And um, we've seen how it works and we know the benefits for our residents and it definitely positively impacts their quality of life in the moment and, and throughout their day. So. Very cool. So likewise, Corey, I'm sure that you guys are in a similar position and that mm -hmm. you're very strapped for volunteers at the moment. So what can people who are watching right now do to get involved and help you guys out? I can tell you, for, um, for Chelsea Retirement Community, our music and memory program is volunteer driven. We have um, campus-wide, we can have up to 380 plus residents. That's a lot. So for, our, for us to take that on, we would not be able to touch as many people. So the more volunteers we get, the more people that we can touch. And, you, and it's such, um, it's so meaningful what the music does for them. So with, with more volunteers, we can download more iPods, we can interview more people, we can get the headphones on the residents. The more people, the better. And they will get as much back as they give because you get that, that smile and that seeing that person connect that may have like a flat face when you come in and they don't really have, you know, very many expressions and you put that music on and they start to sing. I mean, it just melts your heart. So rewarding. It, it is. I mean, the volunteers will get back way more than they yes. even give and it's beautiful. It's just beautiful. For sure. So Gary, outside of the facility and in the community, how can people get involved? Well, I just want to say a couple things about community involvement. I, I think that when we're faced with things uh, of this magnitude, of, of this kind of thing that we have to deal with, our families uh, are impacted by this. It's really these times where, you know, collectively, it's all of our collective energies and our collective intelligences that we need to bring together to bring to bear to try to find a solution to this problem because there is really no cure for Alzheimer's. There's no way to slow it. There's no cure for it. Uh, we need to make some progress on this, and it's through these kinds of things, bring the attention and education of people that makes an enormous difference. Uh, back to your, your, your comment about offering to collect iPods and things like that from the community. If we look at the state of Michigan, 
in our enrollment in the music and memory program, it pales by comparison to our neighboring states. Neighboring states like Minnesota, Wisconsin, Ohio have hundreds of licensed music and memory organizations. Michigan has 21. Wow. So you're looking at roughly five of them here in this room. So you've got 20% of the music and memory programs in the state of Michigan are represented here today. So my call would be for people who have loved ones who are getting Alzheimer's care, one thing I would do is to make sure that I would lobby for a music and memory program in those facilities or a way to get it into your home, through your senior centers, whatever way you can get this to happen. That's what I would add, I would encourage people to Wonderful. do. Wonderful. And, and start putting music together already. Yeah. Music <laughs> now. Yeah. So yeah. we yeah. are running out of time. Yeah. I apologize for interrupting. If my viewers are interested in getting involved, go ahead and search Music and Memory iPod Drive and Fundraiser on Facebook or email myself at perteldi at umich.edu. Um, contact any one of our wonderful panelists. We would be more than happy to get you guys involved. So as always, thank you guys for tuning in. Um, and we look forward to hearing from you guys and getting you involved with Music and Memory.